Morning, 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 guys. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I'm Sean. Bugsy's just next to me. As always, this is episode 190 of Tottenham Walks. I hope you're happy and healthy doing the things you love. Please do me a favour. Smash the like button for me, as you always do on the video. Smash the subscribe if you haven't already. Amazing numbers this week, guys. I think we've had like 200 new subs walk into the door. So welcome to all of you. And uh, welcome back to the rest of you. Hope everyone's doing well. Hit the notification button whilst you're there and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic, which is, of course, back to transfer rumours. Let's get them out of the way in order of the story. Lucas Mora is likely to leave, will leave the club, excuse me, in the summer. His agent has said it's a 50-50 split, basically, whether he goes to South America or stays in Europe. There's plenty of teams that are after him. And look... It looks like he's got maybe after his return from his suspension, six more games in a Tottenham shirt potentially where he might see minutes. I hope the fans give him a kind of warm send off because look, he's been a long term servant of the club. Obviously the most memorable moment for me was his night in Amsterdam allowed us all to dream. I'd also say in other big moments, I thought he played very well in the Carabao Cup final against Manchester City. He, uh, I thought he was spectacular, coming deep, picking the ball up, turning on that little tiny turning circle that he's got with his low centre of gravity and causing mayhem against uh, Laporte to the point where Laporte should have been sent off for three very bookable offences and wasn't when the game was at nil-nil. It was in flux. So he should have played in the final of the Champions League. But apart from that... You know, you might want to call him some, something like a big game player, maybe. But for every other game, I don't know. He always flattered to deceive. A man with so much talent, bags of potential. Very dangerous player. But ultimately, you're judged on your goals and assists as a forward more than anything else. And there just wasn't enough of them at Tottenham. So, I wish him well. And I hope all Tottenham fans do. But we move on. We move on. Of course, it's also likely that... Um, Dan Juma won't be staying around Tottenham for much longer. If there was any interest in Tottenham making that deal permanent, you would imagine we would have seen more minutes from him. And we really haven't. Bit of a waste of time. And so Tottenham will probably look to need to bring in a couple of forwards for next season. Even if you know Harry Kane is staying and Sonny is staying and Decky is staying and Richarlison is staying, there is still that need if you're going to have six forwards we'll probably need to replace two maybe one of them might be the return of brian hill from loan although as much as i like the guy i think he again has bags of potential i don't think he's ever really done anything too drastically wrong when he's played in a tottenham shirt very energetic looks passionate and driven i would love to see him come back in and be happy at tottenham to me he comes across like he's very unhappy here prefers warmer climate and probably wants to go back to spain or somewhere like that and so maybe he might be a participant in some sort of deal that may emerge for one of the two targets that we seem to be looking at and front of the queue according to many of the uh, the articles that are out this morning and yesterday and we'll start with the one where maybe Brian Hill might be a part of it and that is for Pedro Gonçalves or Gonçalves never confident with how I say Portuguese names uh, the sporting player Three goals from four appearances in the Europa League. You remember that absolute worldie he did against Arsenal almost from the halfway line in the last 16 at the Emirates just a couple of months ago. Then you'll also remember the assist he got against Tottenham in the Champions League. Alongside that, I think he scored 18 goals this season from uh, in all competitions in 24 games or something like that. I'll put the stats up to make sure I'm not wrong. Uh, for sporting, an incredible player, can play on the left, can play on the right, and can play in the centre. He usually plays off the left, but he's absolutely two-footed. Another kind of small, tricky player, bags and bags of talent. I love him. I love a lot of players from sporting, to be entirely honest. And, uh, you know, he might cost 35 to 40 million quid. Of course, dealing with the sporting chairman is never easy, as we found out in January. He is the Portuguese Daniel Levy. <laughs> um, 
but a, a very, very, very talented player and one that, you know, Sporting are a team that do have the propensity and the frequency of ending up selling their players, their best players, just like Benfica do, into other clubs in Europe and making a profit on it and keeping that kind of sustainability and the financial um, kind of hamster wheel turning. And look, we do have a relationship with them now, whether it's a good one or a bad one or a, or a frustrating one. There is history now with dealing with that club. So you never know. Personally, for me, if we're going to pick another player up from Sporting Lisbon, I'm very happy with Gonçalves. I think he's a superb talent. Uh, but I would rather see us go after uh, that monster number six that they have, Manuel Ugarte. I think he's 22 years old. I think he's probably got the worst disciplinary record in Europe, but what an absolute monster he is. You know, every top team needs a monster. You've got Rodri for Man City. You've got Casemiro. You've got Thomas Partey. You know, everyone's got one. Even Bruno Grimares for Newcastle is emerging as that kind of player for them, although he's obviously a bit more of a box-to-box -box and creative. Tottenham don't really have one in Hoiberg or Bentoncourt or Yves Basuma. They're all different players. And I think that if Tottenham were to go and get someone like him, Manuel Ugarte, or someone like the Polinia fella from Fulham, who again is absolutely out of this world, in my opinion, then you could kind of envision a midfield three next season with, let's go with Polinia or Ugarte, Bentoncourt, and then, you know, maybe Basuma, maybe somebody else next to him, maybe Pape Sar, or maybe someone, someone better, maybe a Gonçalves if he wants to play in the middle, right? You can imagine the kind of the, the the resilience of that of that number six role, just sitting there protecting a hopefully very improved defensive line as well, which is what you're going to need if you're going to play Pedro Porro as a right back and Destiny Udoji as a left back. You're going to need someone who is far more able and capable of just sitting in and protecting those centre backs uh, in a six. But yeah, I'm getting off the topic. God, Salves for me, absolute world class player or emerging into one. Sorry, I'm not going to say world-class. I'm going to wind that back. Retraction. He's not world-class, but he's very, very, very talented. And like I say, depending on how much money they want for him, he could be an option and one that is very versatile in where he can play. The other name that has been linked with Tottenham the last couple of days, guys, is Hakim Ziyech, the Chelsea player who's been frozen out under Graham Potter. Doesn't really play very many minutes at, at all anymore. And Todd Bowley, who's made that long list of players that he's trying his best to get rid of in the summer for financial fair play reasons and to try to make room in the squad for, you know, for some of the next crop, I guess, of, of players that he wants to bring in under his new wildly difficult to understand vision, that opaque, <laughs> that opaque philosophy that's not really become clear yet. Um... Ziyech has been often linked with Tottenham. You know, very good player. Played against us, you know, back in Europe when he was, I think it was in the Ajax game, actually. Um, you know, fantastic, fantastic talent. For me personally, whilst he's always played well against Tottenham in the Premier League, I don't think he's really played that well most of the time for Chelsea. Another one that's kind of been a little bit of a disappointment. And I think he was originally valued at 28 million quid, something like that, uh, by Bowley. He was going to go on loan to PSG, uh, in January, but then Chelsea didn't get the paperwork done on time. I think since then, Bowley has now cut, or apparently, according to the article, slashed the price tag down to about you know, 18 million. And so maybe that's enough for PSG to say, OK, we'll, we'll bring him in um, and make use of him in our, <coughs> in our new sort of new rotation that's emerging over in Paris. Listen, I like Ziyech. I think he would be a, a good addition to the squad if he's going to start. I don't really think he's much better than what we have. He's, he's a little bit different, but... I don't think think he's, uh, you know, I don't think it's likely, put it that way, not least because he plays for Chelsea and how often do Tottenham and Chelsea strike deals with each other? It's one of the reasons why I don't think Chelsea would go in for Harry Kane or would be successful if they did. I don't think it's likely, but that's the, the articles are saying that we are in a sort of tug of war with PSG for him. For me personally, guys, if, if there's any truth to either of them, I think there'd be more truth for the Gonçalves story than there would be for the, the ZH story. Let me know your thoughts, though. Do you do you rate, rate Gonçalves? Do you rate ZH? Do you think that either of them are likely? And really, how much money are we really going to have this season? You know, I watched uh, We Are Tottenham TV yesterday. Shout out to those boys. They did a, um, a points tally, like, a, you know, predict the rest of the Prem kind of thing. And even when they were being very, very generous with Tottenham's results and very, very like harsh with predicting Newcastle and United's, it still looked as though Tottenham just didn't have enough, um, you know, enough uh, points in there to be able to realistically get fourth, which means a 50, 60 million pound hit to 
you know, whatever the, the, the kind of predicted revenue streams would be, 50 to 60 million quid less if we finish fifth, even more than that if we finish sixth or seventh or eighth. Remember, we still have to pay for Decky. We still have to pay or start the ball rolling with paying the Pedro Porro thing because they're both technically still on loan. I know that that money doesn't all come out at once. Obviously, it's structured over the terms of the trade, but uh, it's still going to be you know, something that has to be factored in. We've got eight players returning from loan that I'm sure Tottenham would love to be able to liquidate and sell and, and re regather some money for. But ultimately, as I've said a thousand times, you know, most of Europe doesn't have anything like the money that the Premier League does. And so can't afford the wages. Do the players that have still got fairly long contracts left at Tottenham on high wages want to go to places where they're going to have to sacrifice 60% of their salary? I'm not so sure how easy it's going to be for us to, to figure out the new homes for eight players, most of whom won't be wanted by Tottenham, especially when you don't have a director of football at the moment. There's so many chicken and the egg situations. It's going to be very difficult for me to see... Uh, the, the clear pathway to a kind of seamless summer. I think it's going to be a weird one, very frustrating. Loads to talk about. But for me personally, when you've already got a goalkeeper you need to replace, we spoke about that yesterday, whichever one of those choices we were thinking about or any of the others, you're probably going to be paying 40 million quid for a, uh, for a top talented goalkeeper. You're going to be paying at least that for a top centre-back. And um, if you're now looking for a, a potentially a monster number six as well, plus some forwards... Maybe James Madison as well, don't forget. Listen, maybe James Madison is an alternative to, to Conchalves because they both can play similar kind of versatility. Uh, they, they both have similar versatility in their, in their ability to play left, right or centre. But look, there's going to be a lot of money needed, right? And we're not going to get it from the Champions League in all likelihood. So I don't know. I don't know how it's all going to figure out. Let me know your thoughts, guys. That's it from me today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on, Spurs.